Instant grace question. Is grace always warmth, kindness, and sweetness? News just came down that Sinead O'Connor has died suddenly at the age of 56. May she rest in peace. But Jim Babka notes how one event can seem to define a life, and in the case of Sinead, much of the media is talking about how she tore up the Pope's picture on an October 1992 episode of Saturday Night Live. Was Grace at work? I'm Bill Protzman, your moderator. Here's Jim. As we record this, we have learned just within the last couple of hours that Sinead O'Connor has passed away at the age of 56. We don't at the present moment know what the cause of death is, uh, but there is some reason to speculate a little bit because uh, her son, 17-year-old son Shane, had committed suicide, and she was very disconsolate about that, understandably so, and had a history of depression uh, that she suffered with. A lot of people may think they can sum up a life by an event, particularly if it's considered to be a negative event or one that was shocking. And Sinead O'Connor definitely had that. In October of 1992, she went on Saturday Night Live. I was watching at the time, because not everybody was able to see this later, when it was played in tape. And she tore a picture of Pope John Paul II, ripped it up in front of her microphone, a lot of people that night didn't understand what it was she was talking about. She was an Irish singer after all, and her country had been ravaged by a religious war. But more importantly, she knew something that a lot of people didn't know yet that is common knowledge now 31 years later. And that was that the Catholic Church had a scandal underway of abusive priests. And the church's approach had been to cover that up everywhere that it was happening. They were covering it up in the in Europe. They were covering it up in the United States. They were moving these abusive priests who were molesting children around rather than calling them to judgment. Now, I bring this question up because I talk about grace here on this show. And the people in my life who know me, uh, and even at times when I've been getting ready to say something on, you know, in an interview or some other setting, I will say something or say something a certain way and somebody will say to me, and usually in jest, they'll say, well, that's not a very gracious thing to say. As if grace means always kindness, sweetness, uh, extreme gentleness to the point of being a doormat. We can never say anything direct with judgment where maybe it should be. Maybe grace is a cop-out from actually being able to speak for social justice. Scripture reports in Micah 6, 8, that religion is to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with your God. In the New Testament, in James 1, 27, religion that God our Father accepts as pure and faith faultless is this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father and God describes himself as a father to the fatherless in Psalm 68, 5. A defender of widows is God in his holy dwelling. You see, when prophets speak, and people get this confused, a lot of people think prophecy is about predicting the future. When prophecy and reality is about telling a harsh truth, the kind of truth that will put you at odds. The job of the prophet is to stand in the place where they can get stoned. And believe me, telling the truth can get you stoned especially if you say it in a way that is designed to call everyone to account. It's a hard line to walk, and it sometimes means being very direct. There are several verses in the Bible that deal with widows and orphans, for example, and it, they tend to emphasize the vulnerable stat status of these people and encourage their care and support. Here's just a few examples. Deuteronomy 27, cursed be anyone who denies justice to foreigners, orphans, or widows. Deuteronomy 10, 18, he defends the cause of the fatherless and the widow and loves the foreigner residing among you, giving them food and clothing. Isaiah 1, learn to do right, seek justice, defend the oppressed, take up the cause of the fatherless, plead the case of the widow. Zechariah 7, do not oppress the widow 
or the fatherless, the foreigner or the poor. First Timothy 5.3, give proper recognition to those widows who are really in need. Divorce comes up. Malachi 2, this is another thing you do. You cover the altar of the Lord with your tears, with weeping and groaning, because ye no longer regard your offerings or receives them gladly in their hands. Yet you ask why? It is because the Lord has been a witness between you and the wife of your youth, against whom you have broken faith, though she is your companion and your wife by covenant. Does this language sound like it's weak? Like it's sentimental? Like it's mushy? Like it's just sugar sweet kind? Or is this God who says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Is this God who says, I am a father to the fatherless and defender of the window, widow? Is he saying that these acts of justice matter enough that they need to be spoken for? On children, Matthew 18, if anyone causes one of these little ones, those who believe in me to stumble, it would be better for them to have a large millstone hung around their neck and be drowned in the depths of the sea. Oh, that Jesus, he really didn't show a lot of grace when he said that. Or how about the ways that people take God's name in vain? Malachi 2 says, you have wearied the Lord with your words, yet you ask, how, do we, how have we wearied him? By saying all who do evil are good in the sight of the Lord and the time, them he delights. Or where is the God of justice? I will contend with you that what Sinead understood and what she was attempting to call attention to, whether you thought it was artful or not, whether you liked it or not, she was attempting to say something big is happening here. And I'm going to stand where God is standing at the moment with victims, with innocent children. And I'm willing to call out the establishment. I'm willing to call out even a holy man and say, you too must do justice. And that is what prophets do. And when they do it, hopefully with love, it is not lacking in grace. So I'm going to give myself a little bit of license going forward here. Sometimes the tough thing needs to be said, and sometimes it needs to be said toughly, just like I saw in my Bible. And that, my friends, is grace.